Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing another video on Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bontic Boroi Part 1. Part 1 of the book, of course, not part 1 of the video. So today we will start on Chapter 10, Mad Mr. Melvin, as you can see here. Um, so before we get started, make sure you smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, smash the notification bell. Also, check out my Instagram, it's MarkBrandTV, no capital letters, no spaces. And let's just get right into the video. Chapter 10, Mad Mr. Melvin. Melvin was furious. He ripped the comic book in half and tossed it over his shoulder. Then he washed his hands in the toilet and stormed out of the restroom. I'm going to get George and Harold for that, said Melvin. I'm going to teach them a lesson they'll never forget. After school, Melvin grabbed his Combinatron 2000 and headed home. Melvin's mother and father were both busy um, working on a top secret government experiment when Melvin walked into the front door. Hello, son, said Melvin's father. How's your day at school? Terrible, said Melvin. Nobody in school with sufficient respect for my beautiful mind. Those dull-witted, lame-brained, gum-chewing idiots are more impressed with comic books than they are with the wonders of science. But I shall teach them. I shall teach them all. Ha 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 ha. That's nice, honey, said Melvin's mom. Pop rocks. Coke. Melvin marched into his room and, um, to begin a, um, building a brand new super-powered robot. But when he opened his bedroom door, he saw the family's pet cat, Dandrella, sleeping quietly on his bed. Hey, Melvin screamed, what are you doing on in my room, you stupid cat? You know I'm allergic to you. Now get out and, uh, chew! A few, uh, and after a few hours, Melvin had built his newest and most powerful robot ever, which had three sets of in interchargeable laser eyeballs, macro hydraulic jumpatronic legs, super smart uh, blading uh, automo arms, and was powered by three separate twin turbo um, 9000 SP5 Kung Fu titanium lithium alloy processors which were all built into a virtually indestructible, indestructible flexogromonic exoskeleton that had the power to punch through cinder blocks, crush steel in its vise-like grasp, and plow men mercilessly through, through poorly written run-on sentences. It could also slice bagels. That out to do the trick, said Melvin, wiping his nose on a tissue. Now all I have to do is uh, a chew. Combine my body with this bionic robot and I shall be the most powerful boy who uh, a chew ever lived. Chapter 11, Melvin's Fantasy. As Melvin set up the Combinotron 2000 and made the project adjustments, he imagined what his life would be like as the first um, world's first bionic boy. He imagined himself walking into school the next day, his arms swing conveniently as he crashed through the classroom wall. The girls would soon um, swoon as Melvin talked for hours about the amazing world of science. Miss Robel would probably let Melvin sit at her desk from now on because Melvin's new buns of steel would be too massive to fit into an ordinary children's chair. Maybe Mr. Krupp would, be, would invite the governor to visit the school so he would show off his smartest and most powerful student. If so, the National Melvin Sneedley uh, if so, the governor will probably declare a new holiday, National Melvin Sneedley Day, a day when kids all over the world would get extra homework and pop quizzes to, the, to honor the glorious name of Melvin. National Melvin Sneedley, superstar. But the best part of all would be, would be George and Harold's reaction. They would be so terrified by Melvin's incredible size and strength, they would drop to the knee, their knees and beg for mercy. And Melvin would spare them only if they agreed to be slaves for all eternity. They'll have to carry his books, sharpen his pencils, and be personal footstools during each class. Life is gonna uh, achoo, rule, said Melvin. Chapter 12, The Night of the Nasty Nostril Nuggets. The 
the title of the book actually. Melvin turned on the Combinotron 2000. A high-pitched tone pierced the air, getting higher and higher in frequency as the machine charged into full power. Oops, said Melvin as he quickly turned on the dramatic effects setting to off so he wouldn't disturb his parents. Suddenly, uh, silently, the machine continued to charge as Melvin entered calculations to amount for his clothes and glasses. When the laser extractor had finally warmed up, Melvin st stepped in front of the Combinatron 2000, standing perfectly still beside his new robot. Suddenly, two streaks of glowing light flashed in onto Melvin and the robot as the Combinatron 2000 began assimilating information onto the two elements as it was about to combine. Finally, a computerized voice started to count down, combining two elements in five seconds. Melvin stood perfectly still. Combining two elements in four seconds, Melvin's nose began to twitch. Combining two elements in three seconds, suddenly Mel Melvin felt an uncomfortable urge. He cupped his hands over his mouth and nose as his eyes wheezed close and in voluntary. Ah uh ha! -huh. Combining two elements in two seconds. Achoo! Melvin looked down at his hands, which were now glistening with mucus and crust. Um, crusty chunks of semi-dried booklets. Instantly, the Commandotron 2000 began to recalculate the elements in its laser sights, combining three elements in one second. Three elements? M Melvin screamed in horror. What's the third element? Quickly, Melvin's eyes darted around the room, searching for any new element that might have accidentally made its way into the sights of the laser extractor. What's the third element? He screamed again. Then he, th um, then he looked down at his at his crusty, dripping, um, flag-filled hands. Uh-oh, said Melvin as, his, as a blinding burst of light, of white light enveloped him. Blessed! Chapter 3, 13. The next day. The next day, Melvin didn't show up for school on time. Nobody really seemed to notice, though, because all the children were excited about the show and tell. Almost everyone had brought some really lame stuff like books or awards, but George and Harold had something that was totally cool. Everybody remembers Sulu from yesterday, right? Said George. Well, we took him home to live us um, to live with us in our treehouse, and we taught him the greatest trick. Said Harold. The two boys carried Sulu over to the classroom window and opened it up. Harold um, pulled out a large watermelon out of his book bag and showed it to Sulu. Okay, Sulu, said George, show everybody your new trick. And one swift motion, Sulu placed his mouth onto the wa watermelon and shoved the entire thing into his left cheek. The fourth graders were stunned. No, no, said Harold, that's not the trick. The trick is what happens next. Sulu looked out the window and eyed a dead tree at a far end of the empty playground. Sulu began to chew up the watermelon, then puckered his tiny hamster's lips and spit. The watermelon seeds fired out of Sulu's mouth, hitting the target with expert precision. In no time at all, the dead tree at the end of the playground was reduced to a pile of twigs and sawdust. The class cheered as George and Harold petted their amazing little bionic body. George and Harold didn't think that anybody could beat their show-and-tell display, but they were wrong, because at that very moment, Melvin Sneely was dripping down the hallway toward the classroom door. Melvin had, hadn't brought anything for show-and-tell. Melvin was the show-and-tell. Chapter 14, The Unnecessary Disgusting Chapter Notice, the following chapter is extremely gross. To avoid nausea, projectile vomiting, or other gastro nauseational and whatever please remain from eating for at least one hour before reading this chapter you won't want to eat after reading them let me assure you so actually don't eat while you're watching this video and if you don't want to see something gross then like skip to the end maybe okay all of the fourth graders were cheering and petting sulu as the classroom door slowly opened. A greenish glistening behemoth entered the room, filling the air with the sounds of grinding metal gears and wet, gooey, bursting bubbles. Some of the girls screamed. Some of the boys did too. You guys are so amateur, uh, said the horrible beast. 
At once the children recognized the terrifying creature that stood before them. Melvin, they cried. Yes, it's me, gurgled the wet, jiggling monster angrily. His eyes and nose were dripping with warm, greenish, custard-like mucus. His robotic arms were caked with massive globs of crispy, crispy, shimmering snot. As he turned to close the classroom door behind him, part of his hands um, uh, came off the doorknob. It oozed slowly down the door, leaving a chunky trail of moist excretion. Melvin squished and slushed as he jiggled over to his chair. Each gooey footstep coated everything he touched became wet and trusted with warm, bubbly, slurpy whatever. When Melvin sat down, generous helpings of greenish pudding like uh, goo slowly dripped down the chair, collecting into a creamy, gelatinous puddles beneath him. The puddles themselves were slightly transparent and speckled with thick, shimmering nose hairs and red and dark red chunks of coagulated blood, which, all right, all right, yelled George to the narrator. Enough with the descriptions. You're making us all sick. Thank you, George, said Miss Ribble. Now, Melvin, why don't you tell us all about wh um, all what happened to you? Well, said Melvin, I tried to combine myself with a bionic robot last night, but I accidentally sneezed at the last second. So you got com so you got combined with a robot and boogers, asked George. Yes, said Melvin, but don't worry, I'm building a uh, Sabotron 1000, which will reverse the effects and turn me back into a boy again. It'll just take six months to finish. Six months, said Harold. Yeah, so... Cellular separation is a highly complex pr um, procedure, said Melvin. It's not like building a robot. It takes time. You should try taking the batteries out of that combinotron thingy and putting them in, in backwards, suggested George. That might reverse the effect. Melvin rolled his thick, bubbling, crushed, covered, in ferrated eyeballs. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, he gurgled. Chapter 15, The New Melvin and we will stop here for now i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you smash the subscribe button smash the like button smash the notification bell also check out my instagram mark brand tv no capital letters um, no spaces and i'll see you later bye